Welcome to our first episode of Spirit Life Downloads. I'm so excited that we have one of my heroes in the faith and uh, someone who's been a mentor in my life since I believe 1996. We first met when I was pastoring in uh, City Harvest Church in Singapore. And uh, we have Apostle Mike Connell from uh, Hastings, New Zealand, from down under up here with us today. And uh, he's a man of the spirit. And uh, the, the, the course that we're doing or the topic we're gonna be talking about is spirit life. And uh, that's something that's so, much, so many times missing from the body of Christ. And I think, you know, with us wanting to be uh, a church, people that seek and save the lost, the Bible says seek and save the lost, but uh, we've been labeled seeker sensitive churches uh, where we think that we need to, you know, downplay the moving of the Holy Spirit and get away from the gifts of the Spirit, the operations of the Spirit, which the Bible clearly says is a sign of wonder to the unbeliever also to bring them in. And so it's my passion, and I think um, to, to see that really restored, and that uh, I know there's people all throughout America and the world that are hungry again mm. for the supernatural. So thank you, Pastor, for being with us. And uh, I know you travel all over the world, and let, let's talk a little bit about that spiritual hunger, the need for spiritual hunger, and what you're seeing in the world in your travels, and what you really feel God is doing uh, in restoring the supernatural to the church. Wow, wow. Uh, I, I think that the Bible is full of the supernatural from one end to the other. And uh, our God is a supernatural, meaning above and beyond the natural realm. So to me, the supernatural uh, is normal through the Bible. And uh, it's uh, tragic that it's absent from so many churches, particularly in the West. But traveling around the world, uh, particularly in Asia, Africa, many of these countries, there's such a hunger for the things of the spirit, hunger for the supernatural, because the needs of people can't be met naturally. You know, people need deliverance from demons. Well, that can't be, there's no pill that'll fix that. There's no counseling fix that. Uh, people have sicknesses that can't be so, uh, resolved. That there's a need for healing. People need breakthroughs and finances. And, and so we cannot meet the needs of people uh, fully unless we have access to the resources of heaven. And uh, the way I read the Bible and see the ministry of Jesus is it was always God's intention that man as his representative would access the supernatural to bring revelation of the Father's abundance and provision to the earth. So I see uh, everywhere I go, uh, churches uh, needing to come to grips with developing uh, the supernatural in the environment and atmosphere of the church and to put into place processes in their churches that help people journey to spiritual maturity, that not just uh, get them into the church and know the culture of the church, but actually that there's a process of formation spiritually for people and, uh, and uh, assistance in a very practical way to understand they're called to be ministers of the Spirit. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, and I, you know, as you're talking, I was reminded of the scripture, Paul said that I didn't come with mere enticing words of human wisdom, yeah. but it's the power and the demonstration of the Spirit. And, and you know, with our just teaching, and a lot of times we like to lecture, give inspiration, or we like to give information but that doesn't transform a person's life. So how do we move in that dimension? We're talking about moving in the supernatural. What kind of expectancy or position do we need to put ourselves in to be able to see that? Because there are those out there that maybe they say, I wanna transition and be more, uh, and see spirit life in my life and in my ministry. How do we kind of make that transition? And for someone watching us and they're saying, hey, I want the supernatural, but I don't really grow up in it. What do I do? Well, I think Jesus, Jesus uh, clearly in his ministry had a public ministry where he demonstrated the supernatural, mm -hmm. but he also had a ministry to 12 where he discipled them. And it's very clear in uh, Matthew 10, uh, 10 uh, Luke 10, Luke 9, you, you see there Jesus commissioning them and with the commission to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, there was also the mandate and authority given, power given, to be able to advance the kingdom, do deliverance and healing and so on and so forth. So clearly when you look at his model, it's not a matter of just more information. There needs to be connection to someone who carries a realm of faith, who demonstrates and flows in the anointing, that you can not just see and hear teaching, but you can actually see it in operation and be discipled and learn. So I think often we try to approach Christianity you see only from cognitive left brain and not understand that there's another dimension, the spirit dimension. And it, I think the pastor's the key here, the senior leader, whoever he is, whatever title he carries, is the gateway that opens it up for the supernatural in the church. So if a church wanted to make a shift, there's many things have to shift. 
but it starts with the senior leader and leaders understanding that it's God's intention for the supernatural to be in the church and then connecting relationally to people who ministers who carry that kind of expression and then receiving both teaching and uh, encouragement and training in how to move. That's how it works. It's, it works that way. Because if you have, a say, a big conference and you preach to multitudes, people can receive. But in my experience is many don't carry uh, for any length of time the, the impact or the impartation that was given to them because the culture, the environment is not being built with expectation for the supernatural. So there's first, I think, the hunger and desire, because everything comes out of hunger and desire. Second, there must be connection where we can receive revelation. Uh, I think there's Jesus' pattern itself uh, of how he prepared to carry that anointing. And then there's the building of the leadership team and the culture in the church so that the supernatural operating in the church has got like the banks of a river. There's guidelines for how we function that make it safe for everyone. Mm. And uh, it's very clear when we read 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7, now the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, the, yeah, to all. Mm. Uh, so, so it's clear that God's design for us as his sons and daughters is we demonstrate the supernatural and the purpose of that is for the building of others, mm. not as an ego trip or for self-advancement or self-promotion, uh, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, so we have to go back again, I think, to God's design for our sonship, what he intended, where we're lacking and fallen short of that, and then start to implement the things necessary. Mm, I love it. And there you have it. You know, the Bible says we hunger and thirst were filled. And I, I heard someone say this, uh, hunger is the currency of the kingdom. Absolutely. And so we need to be hungry. I think, you know, in this generation, you see a hunger for the supernatural. Even if you look in the secular, uh, you know, you see all the, the you know, cult kind of things coming up yeah. of, of palm reading, all this kind of things, all of the popular TV shows are about vampires and supernaturals <laughs> yeah. and all that. And there's a hunger in this generation to see the supernatural. And uh, the devil always has a counterfeit, yeah. but it's found, the real is found in the church. And I think as, as ministers of God, we need to um, begin to come to that place where we are hungering for it. Because it's a, like as you said, the principle of headship, the oil flows from the head down. And so if the leaders aren't hungry, they're not gonna have that guidelines. God won't move because he's not going to violate the principle of authority if we're not open to him. Absolutely. And so we need to hunger and thirst. And I know through this series, uh, you're watching because you're hungry. We're going to hear more from Apostle Mike as we get into it. So let's continue to stay hungry and uh, believe that we can catch something. Uh, I always remember uh, when you were teaching that th most things are, are caught, not taught. Yes. <laughs> and that's what you're saying. Getting in an environment, part of hungering is beginning to, to hear this and begin to pray, begin to seek God for it. And God will lead us to the right people. Uh, I'm glad God led me to you. And I were, was able to, to catch it as a young minister and uh, from you and others that God imparted. And God will lead us to the right people if we're hungry. And there's, there's something powerful. Any last words on hunger before we end absolutely. this episode? Well, what, what you say is absolutely correct. That hunger is the beginning of all transformation. Mm. And uh, hunger will fade with substitutes. So if you think of an actual diet, if people eat the wrong kind of food, they lose their appetite. In the kingdom, as we eat the things that are spiritual and substantial in the kingdom, our hunger for God That's grows. Good. And so every year we do seasons of fasting mm. to increase the hunger again, to set our course on engaging with God and having fresh insight and fresh empowerment for the coming season. Mm. So there's no static place in the kingdom. Uh, when uh, we get comfortable in the zone we're in, then we stop seeing the movement of God. Mm. So there's got to be that pursuit. You know, one thing of I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. So desire and seeking go together that I might behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So David, being the greatest military leader, the thing that mobilized them was, I have a deep hunger for God. Mm. And so whatever you're doing externally, that's the outflow of what must be internal, which is my hunger for God himself. Mm. So desire leading to hunger. Yeah, desire leads to pursuit. One thing about desire, that will I seek after. So where there's desire, people will seek and God seems to bring to you. Yeah. God connects you to books, connects you to CDs, connects you to messages, connects you to people. Yeah. It's like if you have the desire and the hunger, then there'll be a gravitation 
uh, towards the people and resources that will help you with this. Yeah, I love it. Taste and see the Lord's good. Once you yeah. get a taste, you just want more. Oh, and I know you're you know, more <laughs> hungrier now even yes. than you ever. And I, I'm the same. I, you're never satisfied. Yeah. We enjoy and there's a, there's, a, there's a being content where you're at, but not being comfortable and continuing to pursue God. So we're going to talk more about that. I hope you've enjoyed our first episode of our Spirit Life Downloads with Apostle Mike Connell. We'll see you in the next episode.